yesterday I was over at Patterington, I think it's pronounced. So I went to look around a farm that dries grass and makes pellets for horses and dries bales. So here's a little bit of that. What's it called? Parton. Partington. Partington. Oh, Patterington. 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 Right, so I'm over at Patterington to do the Discussion Society talk tonight. I'm just looking at Linker Boiler. This is a bit bigger than ours and it's also running off straw. So it's got a massive auger feeding straw in and then the cell lock is is like twice the diameter of ours. And then you've got like a shredder in here. Can't really see, it's dusty. For shredding bales of straw that are getting fed in. It's obviously running on a combine knife chopper blades to chop the straw as it goes through. Feeds it up there. You see in here maybe. No. It's a bit dusty, but chops the straw, drops into there, takes it up into there and burns it just like ours does with wood chip. And then because of Because of the way the shed's set up, our auger comes out and then goes that way. This comes out and goes sideways. So that's the rash auger there going out the wall. And that's a bigger diameter than ours. The cars is small and then goes big and this is the same. Easy to get at that bottom bearing now. That's gone as well. They don't last long, them bottom bearings. This is a big one here now. You can see it shredding the bale of straw. Drop it in the ash augers and the augers at the bottom there. Put it into the intake, which again is huge. But they can also feed wood chipping as well. Put that one. The straw's dropping in there, and then chips dropping in there, and they're blending it into this huge boiler here, which is probably three times the size of ours. Yeah, three three times the size but by doing a blend of wood chip and straw means that the ash is, is nice and not too abrasive so it comes out of these ash augers but when it was just running on straw it could it, the, the ash would melt and go quite hard like concrete it was really abrasive so if they blend a bit of wood chip in with it it makes it better but it's massive this is running a, a grass drying plant the other side of that wall which isn't running at the moment Oh yeah, so the, these are the dyes that you make wood pellet, you make grass pellets out of. So they press the grass through these little holes, which you can't really see because they're all peeled up in grass. But when they're putting just grass through, they'll run at three and a half to an hour of pellets. But if they can add molasses to it for other products, they'll run at twenty to an hour because it just makes it slip that a bit easier. Grass is really abrasive. They'll wear out after a thousand ton, and then dies. This one's cracked. A three and a half thousand pound each, and there's two of them. It's nuts. The power that you need to squash grass into pellets. Stand back so you can see it. It's fairly impressive. But well, it's very impressive. This is the hammer mill. So feed the grass in there, gets fed up, goes through this hammer mill with this huge motor on it. That smashes up fine goes up a bit of a cyclone that takes some of the dust out and then it pellets it through them presses them huge motors there as well that must be 150 horsepower about that see so how many kilowatts it is not on there no how many kilowatts are them motors so that's 100 horsepower is it is it Two hundred and twenty horsepower motor. Four hundred horse. Wow. This is a bale dryer. So you put bales on this conveyor belt and it goes along, and then this hydraulic ram here pushes these probes in. That they've made. They built it themselves. It blows hot air through and dries the bales while they're on the conveyor belt. And then after so many minutes, it moves along. Next bale comes on, so they can get the moisture better in the bales. So if you bale to straw and it's like 30%, you can dry it down to like 10 or 15. Just look at the chase of it off. Clean. Yeah, it's blue. It's a few years old, isn't it? It's uh, 
One off. Oh, there you mean. No, yeah. Matt, powder coated maybe. It's a beast though, isn't it? And there's a couple of foragers here that they use. That, that one, they actually tow a dolly behind it and fill uh, ejector trailers with it. So they have to take tractors on the field. And the big header here off the ideal combine. There's the front of the header. Because of the, oh, big grain pusher there. Um, because of the, because you've got to carry it sort of 20 foot from the edge to the middle. Because the belts on these run in the opposite direction, they run that way. The auger diameter has to be huge to get the material to the middle. It looks well different to the class. And this is the combine it goes on. Ideal nine. It's a bit of a monster. Throat doesn't look as big though as on the class. But this, this is pretty special. This trailer can tip that way. And it's got belts in the bottom like a muck spreader. So they can take grass off, fast track. Get the grass, drive to the edge of the road, park your trailer up on the back of your wagon, tip the trailer, instead of tipping that way, tip that way and then belt it into the wagon on the side of the road so the wagons don't have to go on the field and they don't need loads of tractors carting. Just arrived now at, what's it called? Pattington. Pattrington. Scattered around the room. And look at this quality hat, probably the most. Sell, sold women's hat colour. <laughs> Better just say the name's Imogen, modelling the hat very well. Right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good talk last night, good to meet everyone at Pat Patterington Discussion Group and also thanks to the to the farm that showed me around yesterday, Smiles is it? I think you pronounced the second name, so thank you for them to show me around. Anyway, I'm just showing you how flat it is around here. I would guess that that is flat all the way to the river and that's a boat sat on the Humber. It's also quite flat that way, but to be honest there's a hedge in the way. But this was a safe place to stop to get a picture, so sorry about that, but yeah. It goes flat for miles because I think a lot of this would have been river at one time. And when you get high tides, it can actually flow over. And apparently the River, hum river Humber drains 25% of England. Random fact for you there. Just being working it out, we are just about £300 off eight missions, which is fantastic going. Based on them being about £3,500 every time they go out. So here's to many more, whatever we can help. Alexander Dale is 10, Andrew Dale is 50, Ian the Italian Oregano is 40, J uh, Trevor Jarvis is 65, Lily East, John Leighton, Arthur Armour, Sean Bagley, Chester Morris, happy birthday to all of you guys. And if you want to be on there, as usual, link under every video, and if you are the Phantom Rounder up here, here's your big moments. <laughs> Now in Warwickshire, I've got an NFU meeting tomorrow, but I've been around Andrew Ward's farm today, so you can see some of that tomorrow. Anyway, thanks for, for doing the birthday bumper. Nearly up to uh, 28,000, which is amazing. Thanks for watching today, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Oh, actually, yeah, one last thing. Yesterday's edits had two of the Valtra cab tours because I was editing it as I was talking to someone and trying to meet me at the same time. So that's why it ended up in there twice, because uh, I didn't watch it right through. So sorry about that. Um, you ended up getting a double bill of the Valtra cab.